So at this point we have it. We have everything we need in order to unlock the mystery of why fifth degree polynomials do not have a general solution to find their roots using simple radicals. What do we have? We understand what field extensions are, how to characterize the structure of the splitting field of a polynomial. In other words, where do we locate all of its roots? We also have the all-powerful Galois correspondence that tells us whatever question that we want to answer about fields, we can translate into a question about groups. And because we understand the structure of groups so well, we understand the structure of fields equally well once we hit it with the Galois correspondence. We also understand what it means for a polynomial to have a solution in radicals. We understand what its splitting field will look like. It'll be one of these radical extensions. So we get to this last question. And the last question is, what is it about the fifth degree polynomial that make its roots more difficult to find than the fourth, third, and second orders? So in other words, we're ready to solve the mystery of quintic impossible. So the question now is, why is it that algebra runs out of steam in between degrees 4 and 5. In other words, why is it that there can be a formula in radicals to solve every polynomial of degree 2, 3, and 4, but that there is no such formula to solve generally any polynomial whose degree is 5 or greater? So, what is it that happens between degrees 2, 3, and 4, which are all solvable in radicals, and degree 5, which is not necessarily solvable in radicals? Something happens there in between where algebra runs out of steam. And in the course of the next couple of videos, we want to figure out what that is. So first of all, we know that every Galois group of a polynomial of degree 2, 3, or 4 is going to be a solvable group, and therefore those polynomials must be solvable in radicals. Why is that? Well, it's because even the most stubborn polynomials, in other words, the ones that take the most work to build their splitting field, can still be solved in radicals in degree 2, 3, and 4 because their Galois group is going to be a solvable group. Now remember, if we have the splitting field of a polynomial over the rationals, if we call it sigma, then the Galois group of sigma over q, in other words, the Galois group of that polynomial, will always be a subgroup, isomorphic to a subgroup, of Sn, the symmetric group on n symbols, if n is the degree of that polynomial. Taking the order of the groups on both sides here, and using Lagrange's theorem, we find out that that Galois group has to have a number of elements in it, a number of automorphisms, which is a divisor of the order of Sn. But the order of Sn is n factorial, and because the extension on the left is normal, because a splitting field is always a normal extension, we find out that the degree of this extension always has to be a divisor of n factorial. So the worst case scenario, the most stubborn polynomials to build their splitting fields will realize the upper bound. In other words, the most stubborn polynomials to split will have a splitting field whose degree over q is equal to n factorial because we've built the tallest tower possible for a polynomial of that degree. So let's look at the examples of the worst case scenarios in degrees 2, 3, and 4 and argue for why in each case those polynomials are solvable in radicals. In the quadratic case, the largest possible splitting field has degree 2 factorial, or 2, and the Galois group of such a polynomial will be isomorphic to S2, the symmetric group on two symbols, but the symmetric group on two symbols is really just isomorphic to Z mod 2. So the worst case scenario for quadratics is that we build a splitting field that has degree 2 over the rationals, and if that's the case, then that must mean that this is a quadratic extension. Its Galois group is uh, Z mod 2. It has one non-trivial automorphism over Q. And as we've seen by the quadratic formula, that splitting field is exactly the extension of the rationals by the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And looking at the Galois correspondence applied to this tower, we find out that the Galois group, the full Galois group Z mod 2, corresponds to an automorphism uh, whose quotient with the Galois group of the base here of, of the trivial group uh, is just z mod 2 and that corresponds to the fact that this is in fact a radical extension because the square root of delta the square root of b squared minus 4ac is this new element that we might have to adjoin to q in order to split a quadratic and that new element has the property that a second power of it lands back in the base field. In other words any quadratic can be split by a radical extension of q, specifically the radical extension of q by the square root of b squared minus 4ac. In degree 3, the picture is only slightly more complicated. 
the largest possible splitting field for a cubic has degree 3 factorial, or 6, over q. The largest possible Galois group, therefore, is S3, the symmetric group on three symbols. And in that worst case scenario, we might have an intermediate field in between q, the base, and sigma, the splitting field. And that intermediate field will correspond to a Galois subgroup of z mod 3. And because S3, the symmetric group on three symbols, is a solvable group with z3 as its intermediate normal subgroup, the Galois correspondence then implies an intermediate subfield, f, such that the Galois group of sigma over f is isomorphic to z mod 3. And therefore, looking at the quotients of this uh, solvable series here, the quotient of the first uh, factor here is z mod 3 quotient the trivial group, which is z3 itself. That then implies that the extension on the top of this tower is a degree 3 extension. And because the quotient is the cyclic group, z mod 3, that implies the existence of an element beta in our splitting field whose third power lands back into f. So that's the last step in the tower, is an extension by a cubed root of some element in f. But then likewise, the quotient of the uh, factor on the bottom of the tower here, S3 quotient Z3. That quotient is Z mod 2 because Z3 has index 2 inside of S3. And that implies the existence of an element alpha in our field F whose square lands back in our base field Q. In other words, in order to solve a cubic, it suffices to take only square and cubed roots. Taking square roots gets us from Q up into F, and then taking cubed roots can get us from F up into our splitting field. Therefore, according to this breakdown, every cubic can be solved in radicals precisely because S3 is the worst case scenario for the Galois group of a cubic, and S3 is a solvable group. In degree 4, the same situation holds. The largest possible splitting field will have degree 4 factorial, or 24, over Q, and the largest possible Galois group for a quartic is S4, the symmetric group on four symbols. Now take a look at what kind of tower we could get in a worst case scenario of a 24th degree extension in order to split our quartic polynomial. Well, S4, the symmetric group on four symbols, is also a solvable group. Namely, it's solvable by the descending series of subgroups which begins with A4 and then goes down to the Klein 4 group Z2 cross Z2 and then goes down to the trivial group. So S4 is solvable because it has this descending series of normal subgroups, each of whose quotients is abelian. But then by the Galois correspondence, each one of those quotients is going to correspond to an intermediate field between Q and sigma. So let's take a look at what the degrees of those intermediate fields are going to be. For our first step, the quotient of the Klein 4 group by the trivial group will give me a Klein 4 quotient. And that implies the existence of actually two elements in our splitting field, which are square roots of elements in the next uh, intermediate field down, which we're going to call f. So in other words, to go from f to sigma, we take the square roots of two independent elements and extend by each of them, so that the Galois group of that extension is isomorphic to the Klein 4 group. The next quotient, a4 quotient by the Klein 4 group, gives us a z mod 3 quotient. That implies the existence of a an element beta in f whose cube lands in e. In other words, when we go from e to f, we're extending by the cube root of an element in e. And then last but certainly not least, A4 is an index 2 subgroup inside of S4. Therefore, from going from Q to E is a quadratic extension, and that implies the existence of an element alpha in E whose square lands back into Q. So all told, what have we done in order to construct the splitting field of a quartic polynomial? The most that we could have to do is extend by square roots, cube roots, and then some more square roots. So we can solve any fourth degree polynomial merely by taking square roots, cube roots, and then possibly some more square roots. So in any one of these three degrees, any one of these cases, the worst case scenario, the biggest possible splitting field we could have to build is still corresponds to a solvable in radicals polynomial. In other words, the largest possible splitting field is still a radical extension of the rational numbers. So what happens next? in degree 5. Let's try to set the table here. We know that the Galois group of a quintic is going to be isomorphic to a subgroup of S5, the symmetric group on five symbols. In the worst case scenario, that Galois group will realize the maximum. In other words, it will be isomorphic to all of S5. In such a case, the degree of the splitting field over Q will have to agree with the order of S5, and S5 has an order of 5 factorial, or 60. So the worst case scenario will give us a 60 degree extension, sigma over q. 
And we could build a similar tower to the ones in the, pre in the previous slide to find out that that could be made up of extensions of degrees 2, 3, 4, and 5, respectively, uh, in some order. It doesn't necessarily have to be the order that's listed here. But the real question is, why do we have to worry about this worst case scenario? How do we know that a quintic polynomial exists which realizes this worst case scenario? Why is this worst case worth worrying about? We haven't actually proven that a quintic formula doesn't exist until we found at least one bad apple, until we found at least one quintic polynomial whose Galois group is not solvable and therefore which is not solvable by radicals. If we can find even one quintic which is not solvable by radicals, then that implies that there cannot be a formula in radicals to solve them all, because it would have to fail for at least that one. So in our next video, we go about the process of trying to find that one bad apple that spoils the quintic bunch.